I tried to order a charcuterie tray to be delivered today for yes. while we are decorating, but they won't deliver to our house. And I'm like stupidly sad about it. What is it? A charcuterie tray. Oh, you don't know? It's the most oh. beautiful, magical thing, Dana. <laughs> it's usually a pretty tray, like a you can get charcuterie boards, like a wooden or marble or whatever. You can get okay. them custom, they're gorgeous. Uh, but it's like fancy cheeses and different crackers and nuts. And sometimes there's little like flavored honeys that'll go well with the cheeses <laughs> or little jams. And sometimes chocolate. There's fruit, uh, <laughs> little like uh, meats that will go with the cheeses. Ugh. Just it's a, magical. It's and I'm a, so sad because I want it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> just a fancy word for a snack platter. <laughs> I mean, basically. It's a like fancy party platter. Oh, okay. It's a, European thing. Hello friends, future Jenna here jumping in as always with our trigger warnings. So as with every other episode in the beginning, there is a brief mention of alcohol when we discuss what we are drinking. And then for our check-in episode, we discuss a lot of thrillers and some horror, both with books and movies. So any blanket trigger warnings that would be included in those genres, we will apply here even if we don't go too deep into them. And then the only ones I will give specifically, uh, based on the books that we discuss and descriptions that we give, are going to be a discussion on some social norms that could be kind of difficult, as well as books talking about injury to kids and some mild transphobia. And with that, let's get into the episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Book Club Style podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Dana. And I'm Jenna. Two high school friends reconnecting for the joys of reading. Now, when it comes to our taste in a good book, our opinions may differ, but sometimes, sometimes we (laughs) might just be on the same page. Welcome to our latest check-in. Yes, hello. Like you said, welcome to our check-in episode for the month of November. Once a month, Dana and I will be here discussing what our next book will be, why we chose it, and what else we are reading and watching. But first, if you want to go ahead and start us off, my friend, what you drinking? Coffee. (laughs) Because... Uh, with, with the... <laughs> I love that there was such a like period at the end of that. Like, <laughs> uh, with end of story. <laughs> I'm I'm not a big coffee drinker. We were just talking about, but sometimes I feel like I need the a little extra kick. I don't like what caffeine does to me in the morning. I get very jittery, so it's a half cap and um, yeah, a little eggnog in it, I believe, but just to keep me up in the morning because the dog woke me up early. When she's up early, she nibbles on hands and won't leave me alone. So my oh, knuckles were no. bleeding, and I was. <laughs> no longer fall back asleep so I was like it's coffee time (laughs) yeah that's fair um like he said we were talking about it I'm not really a coffee person but dang I mess with a good chai tea every once in a while (laughs) give me the um the matcha green tea yes I have green tea downstairs either I always feel like it's like a I think of it not a hot chocolate but like a hot vanilla is always what I think it tastes like when I get it from like Starbucks but then I also love the iced, uh, the frap, the matcha green tea frap, and oh, that I will kill for. <laughs> sure, I don't think I've ever gotten that. I'm, I make um, uh, oat milk matcha iced lattes at home. Oh, okay, they're so good. <laughs> well, what about your your mug? You have a mug. I do. I also have a mug. I am in the chilly season vibe again. I have a very autumnal like November shaded sweater and I went with a burgundy mug so I'm just like very aesthetic today um I tried to tell Dana it was also coffee and he did not believe me can't imagine why uh I don't have coffee (laughs) I have uh Nick and I made some holiday wassail uh last night and then again this morning because there was just some of the stuff left over and we're going to have another fun day at home today, so. 
funny enough, my mind just immediately goes to flashbacks of the Wassel test from school when I just hear that. As I'm, <laughs> I'm just I'm just imagining myself. I was like, is this the drink that gets you through it? Is that what this is? That's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it probably gets some teachers through it. Yeah. Uh, for anyone listening that's not from Washington State, the Wassel is what they used to call the uh, Washington just standardized learning. A big test. test. Yeah. That so call every it state has, but it has a different name. It, it was the Wassel, W A S L. Um, no, this is Wassail, I think, technically, <laughs> but because it ends with an A I L. But it's like the Christmas song, Here We Come, a Wassail in among Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, so it's a spiced apple cider, or just basically any cheap cider you can get in a jug, uh, brandy, fresh oranges, uh, cinnamon sticks whole cloves and star anise and you put it in the crock pot and it's nice and hot i feel like i don't have the patience to make something like that but i feel like i would absolutely love it if i just had it and so it's just like it's really good (laughs) Uh, so november brand new book brand new excitement and a big surprise with that read you want to tell us the title Yeah, we're very excited about this one. So for the month of November, we are reading The Bro Code by Elizabeth Siebert. Normally, I would also hold it up. I don't have it yet. (laughs) I still need to go get my copy. So imagine a book here. Very cute. (laughs) Our friend Dana there has it. Yeah, Uh, (laughs) for the the YouTubers. For the YouTube. Um, I'm a good one. (laughs) (laughs) It's like when parents are like the Instagrams. The Instagrams. (laughs) For the YouTube. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and it was published just this year 2020 by Wattpad Books and it is 301 pages so since you have your copy do you want to go ahead and read the back cover for us yeah I'll do that real quickly the number one rule of the bro code do not fall in love with your best friend's sister as a certified stand-up bro Nick McGuire knows that some things in life are sacred do not skip ab workouts, never back down from spicy foods, and always accept the outcome of rock, paper, scissors. For these are the, re- uh, the revered doctrines of the bro code, rules of conduct that have been passed down through the ages from bro to bro. <laughs> Quick pause. I can't stop thinking about how I met your mother as I read it. Um, <laughs> like, like, yeah. this is, like this is young Barney almost. Um, oh, for sure. <laughs> Heading into his senior year, Cassidy High's star soccer player has his priorities straight and intends to spend his time playing sports, hanging out, and living by the code. But when his best bro, Carter's sister, Eliza, returns from studying overseas, the awkward academic girl Nick remembers is different. Carter might be Nick's bro, but Eliza becomes his whole world, and he has to make a choice between them. Is being with the girl of your dreams worth breaking the most important rule? Never date your best friend's sister? Somehow, Nick never expected that following the bro code may have even bigger consequences than breaking it. Oh, if I had a nickel, <laughs> that darn bro code. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> and then and- why we chose this book, uh, it's actually a bit of a different story than the past couple months have been. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. This wasn't necessarily a my pick versus Dana's pick. Uh, and originally, we were going to be looking for an interesting nonfiction read uh, for nonfic November for my bookish uh, book tours and bookstagrammers <laughs> out there. <laughs> um, but then we actually connected with Lizzie uh, Siebert, the author on Instagram, and we're talking about this book, and it just sounded so cute. And so really exciting announcement. She is going to be joining us for our discussion on the 30th. <laughs> yes, so excited. So we're yeah, going to be asking her some fun questions, getting her take on the book, uh, maybe specific scenes, why she wrote it the way she did. Very mm-hmm. excited. Yeah, we actually had this uh, picked out and figured out while we were reading Romance Book Club. And yeah. <laughs> which is really funny because I was, I was like, oh, we're going back and forth between somewhat thriller to, <laughs> to romance we've done back to back. But what I yeah. love was just because uh, I think what made me also more open to that is one, yeah, I would love to interview the author. That's a great opportunity. But then two, as I'm reading Romance Book Club, I realized I like cute stories. <laughs> so I was like, this one seems, yeah. seems Especially more up my alley. like 2020 has been such a shit show. <laughs> I just it's- need some in 
uh, up feeling. Exactly. You just need stories that are going to make you feel good. (laughs) And uh, when we start talking about what we're reading upcoming and stuff. Yeah. My next book that I'm starting later tonight is going to fit the bill. (laughs) And so you just, you really need to take that happiness and joyous feeling anywhere you can get it. And I feel like this book is going to do that for us. So I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to, to head in that for since, since I am the only one who has it, but our 20% thoughts for it. Yes. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about- For any of you who this might be your first check-in episode with us, uh, basically what this is, it's a big thing on the bookish side of Instagram, and it's just called the 20% review. And since Dana usually starts the books before I do, I just thought it would be kind of fun to include his first initial thoughts of the first 20% of the book. So just if you're liking it, if you're not, and if you're excited to keep going. Yeah. Quick little backstory of what my plan was is because December we have decided that we are going to start doing two books a month. We're going to become a weekly weekly podcast. Very excited for it. So I had planned to set myself up to the pace of what that would be. So that means reading a book within 14 days. So I put myself on a page minimum uh, for this book to hopefully be done by today. Did not get there. I am just under half though. But the reason is because I am really enjoying this one and I'll get more into that with the 20%. Uh, And then for the second half, I would have read my personal choice, which was going to be something we mentioned earlier on our Instagram. So I'll bring that back up later in the today when we talk about our future reads. So the plan today then is to start reading it alongside bro code so I can still stick to that rule. And if I finish both books by November, which I'm 100% committed to, then we're good for December uh, for our our Christmas Quite excited. Um, so yeah, I am just under halfway with Bro Code. Um, I am definitely enjoying it a lot more than our last read. And I think one of the reasons why- I'm going to turn you into a romance reader yet. <laughs> I'm getting there. Um, it's just cute. What I'm loving right now is uh, Elizabeth's word choice, her tone and how she writes. Um, following Nick, Nick is a player, but you fe- you just, you like him. Even though he's a player, you're like, you've got something about you that I'm- I don't know. I'd hang out it's with a you. Likeable I, player. I, I think you're a sleaze sometimes, but I like you. And so it's just like he's not that bad. Sleaze is maybe harsh, but um, she definitely has the tone of high schoolers a lot better than Stephen King now has the tone of children. <laughs> like I, I truly feel like when I'm reading this, when I started, I started getting high school flashbacks. I was seeing people that I knew because it was just it felt so taking me back to high school. That the of language we should probably say. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that was 20 years ago. No, no, no. We graduated so, seven 20, years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, seven for it, six for you. So, yeah. It's not a stretch to have. No, uh, it's not. High school but, flashbacks, but. <laughs> But it's like, I'm, I'm seeing those days, I'm liking the tone, and I think what's really cool about it is that because the book starts out, you know, it's, she comes back and he's realizing, oh, she, I've got feelings for her. But the thing Oof, is, is it, it's, that. Mm, the trope <laughs> of the best friend's sibling or yeah. like sibling's best friend or you know whatever they're yeah. kind of two different sides of the same <laughs> coin there but what's so good what's, for me <laughs> what i what i love about this is like as you said the word trope is something i'd love to talk more about when we have elizabeth here is that uh-huh. there are tropes in here but she makes them fresh they don't feel like cliches mm-hmm. they work for me and uh, and I'm really appreciating that because I'm like, oh, this is going to be a by the book sort of story. And, you know, you could say that it is, but as I'm reading it, it just feels so fresh and new with this story idea that I'm just kind of like, oh, how'd she do that? And so I, I give her a lot of credit. Halfway in, I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, the way she's written it, that I'm just so engaged. Um, mm-hmm. The reason why I'm not done with it like I should have is the stuff I'm watching right now has taken over a little bit, but sure. uh, <laughs> it... It's, I'm really enjoying it. Halfway is, I think this is going to be a really cute one. And while it's definitely more, you know, it's a, it's a YA, it's not romance book club, but I'm, I'm loving the relationship and the flirting and it's just cute. It it gives me like, you know, I'm like, I remember these days. There are (laughs) uh, people, bookish people on Instagram, YouTube, even just people who review on Goodreads who try and hate on YA and try and say like, yeah, you're reading, but should it count towards your uh, 
yearly reading, like number of books, should it like it's not an adult reading book. a full book? Yeah, and I'm like, um, how very dare you? YA is delightful. Some, and some of the greatest epics are YA. <laughs> yeah, and it's just it's such a lovely you, you, genre. It's you know what? so innocent and just sweet. Mm -hmm. and I love it so much. And so you know, those people are wrong. You know what stories get most movie adaptations? Why? <laughs> so, um, so with Elizabeth, I'm hoping we get it right. Siebert, not Cybert. Mm -hmm. um, I believe she goes by Lizzie based off of my okay. emails with her. Uh, but again, once we have her on the pod, we will confirm yeah. that as well. <laughs> um, but well done. I'm, I'm very enjoying it. Um, my plan is, like I said, I have to start now my personal read alongside with it. Uh, I'm going to be reading the personal read at its page minimum daily while trying to cruise through this. And if I can actually finish this first, then I can focus on just cruising through the personal read. But um, I'm really sucked in. Uh, the, the last note I want to say is what I think I also like about Nick, the main character, is that it's obvious he has a crush on her and it's obvious he's aware, but it's different because it's not the thing where it's like she comes in and all of a sudden like things really change. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if you can tell he's probably had a slight crush before. And it just comes to the, it comes You're to the floor. You're making me so excited. No, and, 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 and it I comes to, to buy it tomorrow. <laughs> and then it comes into the <laughs> forefront. And so there are moments where it's a, cause it's from his point of view, the book. And so it's first person. And, but there are moments where it does like the inner monologue, the inner sentence or something. And it's him telling himself, stop it. Like, mm -hmm. stop looking at her, stop doing this. And I'm just like, you know, you like her, stop fighting it. And I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I get that feeling and I love it. It's so sweet. I'm actually just really taking it so um i'm 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 excited to finish it uh you know today's the football game and the show Whatever. i'm making my parents watch may get in the way but I, maybe i'll try to take the whole night with this one <laughs> see i since nick and i started dating have gotten much better with football games mm -hmm. because i have found that football games come with wine or mimosas and <laughs> for me to read and so i'm just like yes <laughs> It's, very, it's uh, very good for me when I get to just sit there uh, with my book and be like, oh, did something good happen? Woo! <laughs> I'll, no, I'll do that too. Because like I, I've gotten into football more for the past few years. I'll read along. Like I'll read when the other team has the ball. <laughs> I'll kind of look up when we have the ball. <laughs> and then, sure. and, if I, and if I feel my dad flinch or crap, grip the couch, I'll immediately be like, what happened? <laughs> just be like, like, what are we, what I was we like, did. <laughs> did we intercept it? Did, we, did something bad happen? Whatever. And so, but my mom can't handle football anymore because of the fact that my dad just gets so into it that it's like it gets so stressful that she's just like I'm gonna go in the other room uh, so she may get back into reading because we've rubbed off on my mom she now wants to read she bought six random books from Amazon <laughs> I love that but she's only read 40 pages of the book and won't stop I was like why are you not reading she goes because you got us into a show I was like mm -hmm. you're upset about it just read <laughs> yeah my mom is really cute um not so much with this one uh I think she follows our Instagram for the okay. podcast and she, I think, listens to the episodes. But for the most part, I think she gets like notifications when I post on my regular, okay. uh, like my blog account. And so every once in a while, she'll comment or message me and be like, I think uh, your mom should borrow this one. And so <laughs> anytime I go and visit, I'll bring her a book that I. Here you go. I got. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yes. Bro code, I think you're gonna absolutely love it. I'm surprised with how much I'm enjoying it. Like, not that I thought it was gonna be bad, but I thought the same thing where it was like, I'm gonna have to lean into it mm -hmm. um, and see. But it, it just it grabbed me by the scrap. I was like, come here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this. And is now your T-shirt is like, I'm stretched out. Was that worth the goof? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheap shirt anyway. Uh. Probably already stretched out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. All right. Well, do we want to get into what we were reading in the last month? What we are hoping to read coming up? Things like that? Yeah, I'll make mine fast because like I said, the, the plan was to do this in two weeks. I was planned to be done with it and I wanted to be a big surprise. Ha ha, I'm done. And then I'll read the other one. But so what I'm going to be reading now- I am now still along, very impressed. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to be reading alongside it now, my personal, is I put on, we put on our Instagram the other day, uh, a few posts ago none shall sleep by ellie marnie um the reason why is that this is sort of a ya like serial killer thriller and i haven't seen something like that before um i actually want to because it's kind of 
big lettered. I want to do a quick read of the flap because it just sounds so intriguing. Because <laughs> what, what caught my eye was how simple the cover is. Mm-hmm. It is a like, really cool cover. Like it's very simple. I love simple. those covers that are kind of, uh, cartoony isn't the right word, but kind of comic booky. Um, right, Com- right. It, like an old comic book, like an, an old little ad thing. <laughs> and And so I saw it and I was just kind of like, not in a bad way, but I was like, the cover looks cheap. Like it's not, it's not overly artsy, which a lot of why books try to do is an overly mm-hmm. artsy cover to grab the eye. But sometimes that's what turns me away. I was like, you look like the same thing I've seen on the other shelf. So this I looked at and then I read it and this is a flap. 1982 Quantico, Virginia. Two teenagers, serial killer survivor Emma Lewis and U.S. Marshal candidate Travis Bell are recruited by the FBI to interview convicted juvenile killers and provide insight on cold cases. From the start, Emma and Travis develop a friendship, convincing juvenile murderers to talk when even the FBI can't get them to crack. But when the team is called in to give advice on an active case, a serial killer who exclusively hunts teenagers, everything begins to unravel. Working against the clock, they must turn to one of the country's most notorious incarcerated murderers for help, teenage sociopath Simon Gutmanson. Despite Travis's objections, Emma becomes the conduit between Simon and the FBI. But while Simon seems to be giving them the information they need to save lives, he's an expert manipulator playing a very long game, and he has his sights set on Emma. Oof, that does sound really good. And I was just like, oh, mine, and I grabbed it. And I was- <laughs> Because that was when I was trying to find Midnight Sun. I said, screw Midnight sure. Sun, this, this. And so um, I was like, I can pick up Midnight Sun later. So my plan is to read that alongside. My minimum is like 30 pages a day. So that's not killer uh, to get it done in two weeks. Um, but that looks really good. And then one that's been kind of itching at me, which I'll also have fun to show you because it's one of my casualty books that I talked about in our personal times, oh, yeah. is this, uh, I bought this trilogy when I was in Germany, but it's been one I always meant to get. It's of the old Star Wars canon. It's a trilogy. <laughs> Trying to show it up here on the camera. Um, and it's basically Star Wars, the Coruscant Knights trilogy. And the story, this came out shortly after episode three. And the story was after Anakin became Darth Vader. Spoilers if you're a hermit. Uh, <laughs> and so um, somehow. <laughs> the, hey. I'm trying to get Wassel to come out my nose. Okay. <laughs> Jenna, um, It's a story about a Jedi after Darth Vader slaughtered them all, one of the survivors, and he's hiding in the streets of Coruscant, the city planet they were on, as now like a PI. But then I guess he somehow ends up in the eyes of Vader, and it's a trilogy about the Empire hunting him down as a fugitive. And I was like, and he's a detective. That sounds kind of cool. But what I meant by casualty was it's actually now a four-book series. Years later, he did a fourth book. Um, funny enough, it's called The Last Jedi, like the eighth movie, way before it was even made. Um, but what happened was some of the books I had to leave behind in Germany because I couldn't fit them in my luggage. So my this grandmother- This story's gonna break my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I have to buy a new copy because she sent them in a box. And when she sends packages, she tapes the hell out of them, which is good because my then people do don't- too. <laughs> yeah, people don't want to go after them. So, but because the duct tape layers were like inches thick, I had to be a little forceful with the scissors- and I hit the back Ugh. and it went through a few pages. <laughs> so my mom's like, just tape it. I was like, no, it went through pages. I can't. <laughs> and so there is another that I did cut only through the cover, but it wasn't like that. It was a tiny slit. So that I did just tape and I'm okay with it. But this one lost a few, almost a limb. So uh, I have to buy a new version of it. And now I'm going to donate to Google and be like, there are a couple of pages. Nick's books from the move here that mm-hmm. weren't really casualties. They are still readable, but they're just kind of sad now. Um, yeah. <laughs> with the army moving his stuff, they just aren't the most careful with things. Yeah. And so a lot of the paperbacks are just really bent out of shape and sad. Well, that, that happened yesterday. I don't know what it is, even in these days, everything has to be now delivered. There's an issue with just delivery men, I feel like, because uh, my mother ordered a mirror for her wall and it says fragile with care. Take freaking care. They open it up. It had the biggest triangle cracked down the entire. Oh, year. no, that's so sad. But it's OK. She clicked get a refund and they gave it to her. Instantly. They're like, OK, just throw it out. <laughs> so I was just like, just 
can we take care of things? But that was my bad. I was a little forceful with the scissors because my grandmother put 80 layers of duct tape. So, but it's okay. It's only one book in the series. It was intended as a trilogy. Then he wrote the sequel later. So I can hold off on book four since it's a follow up. <laughs> um, but that's kind of it for future. Like I said, I have a bunch of those books now. Part of me wanted to go into our storage unit and grab out some of my book boxes, but there's like six <laughs> and, and find a certain series I want to read. Um, uh, it's about a kid. It's kind of like Dexter, where it's about a kid who knows he's a sociopath, but he doesn't do anything. He just knows to be normal. Uh, but then there's a killer in the town, and he's the only one who can really understand the feeling of it. But then it turns out to take a supernatural twist, and it's not human. And but then it became a six book series, and I was really intrigued. I got halfway through the first book, but I didn't want to take that whole series to Germany, so I decided to stop it. I said I'd read it. Back. Well, now it's somewhere deep in the storage unit. I can't find it. Um, I, for, I forget this series. It's the first book I know is I Am Not a Serial Killer. That is the title. And so, and, and it's really well done. I feel like if someone has to say that sentence, they probably are a serial killer. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Personally. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so it's, it, it's, it's intriguing because it's almost like a teenage Dexter who doesn't do what he does. Um, and then uh, what it is, it turns out these killers sound like it's something supernatural. And so the first three books are him as like a teenager. And I guess the second three books are a few years later when he's older and he becomes a consultant because he's the only one who's faced these things. So I'm like, interesting. So, all right. So it's a good one. And there's also like a, a 3.5, a novella he wrote as like the bridge between both trilogies. And it's only like 30 pages. I'm like, gotta read that too. So I have it, <laughs> but it literally is like so paper thin that it's just sandwiched between both trilogies. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's kind of it for future reads. I don't really, I could talk about all the books that I have on that shelf, but basically it was like, I've been really interested to want to maybe do some Star Wars reading. Um, Cause I mean, Mandalorian season two came out, but I, I'm the only one who watches it, so I don't want to invest into the whole seasons out because <laughs> I hate weekly. We've become so accustomed to binging shows that weekly hurts now. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but what about your current, past, or future reads? So I only read nine books in October. Um, it's it still is a lot. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was telling Nick when he was like, that's still so many books. I need you to stop. Uh, it's just when there's two or three months in a row that you've read yeah. a dozen books each month. Single nine, digits seven, hurts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I only read nine. I Part of the problem was that, A, I was pretty sick off and on in October. Um, just a cold, like nothing crazy. I didn't catch the virus or anything. Right. I just my body I think was really worn out and so mm -hmm. my immune system was just like you're gonna get all of the things <laughs> and um if you hear Nick coughing it's because he's doing the same thing oh no we're just kind of slowly dying together <laughs> um <laughs> uh and another part of it is that the last book that I finished in September and then the first audiobook that I listened to in October, I didn't really enjoy either mm. of them. And so it it just made it kind of hard for me to back to back disappointments. Going and like, just... Yeah. Um so I just I didn't get oh cat hair on my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Again, shocking. Nobody. I had to move him off of my chair in order to <laughs> sit here and record. Um <laughs> So I didn't get quite as much reading done as I was hoping to, but with only one exception, I did stick with all mysteries, thrillers, or horrors. Okay. Um, I read one contemporary romance because I was on the ARC tour. Uh, so basically, I the author sent me an advanced copy for my Kindle, Ooh. and uh, I was a part of the tour like on the release day for it, which was this last Tuesday, Wednesday, the 28th. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was the only one out of theme that I read, but um, okay. I read a couple pretty good ones. I think I mentioned in our last check-in, I might not have, uh, but I <laughs> block this friggin' light back here. Um, I, Is that the one that has a Netflix movie now? Yes. Uh, and that's actually why I did this. 
So I led a buddy read basically for this book. I just kind of put it out into the Instagram universe and was like, hey, y'all, I haven't read this since I was like 15 and I've been meaning to reread it. And now the new movie comes out this month. So anyone who wants to read it with me, great. And then we discussed yesterday. It was super fun. Um, But yeah, so uh, anyone not on the YouTube, it is Mm -hmm. Rebecca by Daphne Du Maurier. Uh, Maurier, I took French in high school. I should be better (laughs) about this. I didn't sleep very well last night, so I just like Best shot in the dark. my brain is giving zero bothers <laughs> about how to pronounce it. <laughs> but it's actually it's a really fun copy that I have. Do you know Little Free Libraries at all? No. So they are they basically look like mailboxes. They're little wooden boxes, and they basically have books in them. People can set up their own outside of their house or something. And then just register it through the little free library website so that there's a map on there and you can see where they all are across oh. uh, at least the U.S. I don't actually know if it's an international thing or not, but um, they basically are take a book, leave a book. And so if you find one, you oh. can take a book that's in there. And if you are getting rid of books and you don't want to sell them or someone like me who sometimes gets sent advanced copies of things, you mm-hmm. can't sell an advanced copy of a book that you were sent oh, obviously, no, 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 no. because it's not <laughs> fully edited but you can give them away or you can put them in little free libraries if maybe oh. it wasn't your favorite book and so they're just really fun I love seeking them out when I am traveling and there was one I actually can't remember where I found this one it might have been on Nick's and my road trip from his parents' house to Washington when we were like gathering all of our stuff to move to Texas. Okay. I found this one in a little free library. And so the cover is like, it's so well loved. You can see it was read so many times. And I think either it was a kid's copy or a parent of a little kid or something, because there's those little like doodles and stuff on the (laughs) front cover that little kids do on uh used to do on like vhs cases and stuff Mm -hmm. and it's just so it's a really fun copy at some point i'll get a newer copy just because it's pretty old and so there are places where even like the words are faded to i i haven't read in a decade so i had to guess what word was supposed to be there (laughs) um but it's really fun i like that one well, yeah, because I saw, I think we were scouring Netflix and the trailer popped up and I watched it and it looked intriguing and, and also just random movie news. It's like, I, I get updates on like, what movie updates are there? And so I think they said that the director for that movie is now going to direct the sequel to Meg, the big shark movie. And so I was like, interesting. I was like, he must be, I don't know, the, the like, I don't know, the book makes it look like it's some sort of contemporary, I mean, not contemporary, but like. I was uh, going to say it's. Classics, Sorry, wrong, for wrong sure. word. It was definitely like, written I, in like the 30s, I think. Like it looks like a classic, like looking at that cover, classic either thriller or romance or something, but the trailer definitely showed me. I was like, that's more thriller-ish and yeah. horror. And- so I haven't watched the new Netflix movie yet. Uh, it was pretty heavily discussed in my buddy Reed conversation, like group text type thing. Uh, and they were saying it's not a very faithful Uh, translation of the book uh, just because like you said it's pretty obvious from the trailer they were trying to make it more thriller than it is Um, and so they just apparently kind of added some things to make it more thriller that might not have been necessary but the book is very much classic so it is a bit of a slow read Um, Mm. but it is a slightly suspenseful romance okay yeah uh, and then just super quickly touch on this one because there's another couple books that I actually want to talk about. Mm-hmm. But this was one that I mentioned in our check-in last month. Yes. So this is They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman. I need to write that one down for myself. Just use all of my <laughs> books to uh, block the back window so I don't look so washed out. Hmm. Uh, and this was the one that you thought was kind of Pretty Little Liars-esque, oh, yeah, where yeah. the main character 
a couple years ago, her best friend had been murdered and the best friend's boyfriend had uh, confessed. I couldn't think of the word. (laughs) Oh boy. Uh, Had confessed (laughs) to the crime. And then now it's their senior year and the boyfriend's sister starts texting the main character and is like, by the way, he didn't do it. And like this secret society that you're in is terrible. So Uh yeah, so (laughs) it's just really interesting. It is kind of a YA uh, kind of procedural thriller ish because you get a bit of that. He's obviously been in (laughs) a jail for those couple years. So you get a bit of that and a bit of uh, trying to prove his innocence and things like that. So it's really cool. (laughs) But then my favorite books that I read this month, uh, this one I won't go too deep into. I read with a book club that I'm in uh, the first Poirot novel, Agatha Christie. So I read (laughs) The Mysterious Affair at Styles. I love Agatha Christie to pieces. Like (laughs) I love all of her stories that I've read and all of her plays. Um, I want to do Mousetrap so badly. But... um, I hadn't read this particular one, so it was very fun. Uh, enjoyed doing that. And then the two that I really loved, I mentioned Verity in The Check-In by Colleen Hoover. And it was another romantic suspense. And it was... <laughs> it was wild. And it was <laughs> so good. The ending, a lot of people don't love. Um, I don't think it ruins the book for anybody, but there mm-hmm. are a lot of people that like love the book up until the ending and it's just kind of like, blah. Um, uh, I liked they- it, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need that as like a recorded sound effect. Just <laughs> Whenever we have a book we don't like anymore, we just play that episode done that. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Um, but basically it is. And it's funny, I was telling Nick, because I was reading this one and Rebecca at the same time, and I was telling him it is kind of reminiscent of Rebecca, uh, just in type of story. But basically, it is this woman who's an author, and she gets approached to finish another author's series. So basically, this uh, other author is really wealthy and really famous this uh six book series that she's writing is basically the harry potter of horror or thriller um in this universe it's just so big and people are so so into it and something happens to her and she is unable to finish the last three books in the series (laughs) and she's not dead um but she is in an accident and she can't finish the series. And so this other author is called in to finish the series and basically starts living in her house uh, with her husband and son. And Verity, the other author uh, that had the accident, is basically just out of a coma and not really responsive, uh, just kind of being you know uh not really, she, not really a vegetable but yeah like. um but she like can't talk she can't move on her own things like that um and so she is also living there with full-time care and crazy things start happening so it turns out that verity and her husband they had two twin daughters that within six months of each other both died <laughs> And now just the son is left. And then I want to say only a couple months after the second daughter passed away, uh, the wife had her accident. And so all of these things and just tragedy is following this family. And so the main character is there trying to basically live in the house long enough to go through Verity's office and try and find information on what she might have been thinking for the last books so that she can finish the series and uh yeah like she starts 
seeing Verity in different places and like Verity will be looking at her from across the room and things like this. And so it starts to kind of be like, is she faking it? Is she not? Like what's happening? And she finds this manuscript in Verity's desk of <laughs> uh, kind of an autobiography of like really dark shit. And so <laughs> she starts getting really freaked out. And of course the main character and the husband start having having a thing because it, it's a romance to some extent. And so it's right. just, oh, it's so good. I it, already it, want it, to read it again. Is the title Verity? Verity, yeah, V-E-R-I-T-Y by Colleen Hoover. I, it's so good. I will have to look at this one. <laughs> yeah, please read it. I want to know all thoughts. Um, oh, ooh, it's so good. And then my other favorite was one that I listened to on audio. Mm. Uh, it was gifted to me from the publisher, and it's called Cemetery Boys. Uh, it, I want to say, came out in September. Okay. Uh, but it, oh God, it was so good. I think technically it's YA. I don't remember exactly. It's kind of harder to tell on audio for me. Right. That might just be me. That might just be a weird Jenna thing. <clears throat> but, um, it's about this. The main character is this young trans boy, young man, I, I never know where the cutoff is that switches from boy to young man. Right. He is a senior in high school, I think, junior or senior. And he and his family are brujas. Uh, and so they are basically magical and help with spirits and crossing over to the other side and... Uh, this whole book kind of takes place the week leading up to the Day of the Dead celebration. Mm -hmm. And it's just so good. And so it is an own voices read for both LGBTQ community and a Latinx character or a Latinx character. And it's just like, it was so good. I, there's not a ton to say about it without like going deep into the story. Uh, but basically it is this main character, this trans boy uh, who his family doesn't want to let him go through the ceremony uh, to become a bruja um, and be able to help the spirits and whatnot because he was born female and they are basically saying like if you want to do the or a brujo excuse me if you want to do the ceremony and become a bruja which is the female version great but we're not going to let you do the male ceremony and so he and his best friend do it themselves and he summons a spirit uh that he thinks is his cousin who just passed away to try and figure out what happened to him um, and try and help release his spirit before the Day of the Dead ceremony. Mm. And uh, it ends up being this like bad boy from school who uh, had just passed away and doesn't yeah. know what happened to him. And so he's trying to like help this other character, Julian, uh, make sure his friends are okay because he was with his friends when he passed away and try and figure out what happened to them, try and figure out what happened to the cousin. Mm -hmm. But also, like, the main character is trying to do all these things to prove that he's a brujo and right. prove to his family, like, who he is and all that. And, of course, they fall in love and it's just, like, <laughs> so cute and I loved it so much. It That one sounds intriguing, but I'm more... Engrossed into Verity's synopsis. Oh, for sure. That one Verity a lot. grabs you from the word go and just does not <laughs> let you go. Uh, Cemetery Boys is not quite that same way. That one sounds uh, like it an is acquired a pretty taste. long one. It mm. I listened to it like I said on audio, and I want to say the audiobook was like thirteen hours or something. Holy it was crap. lengthy, um, but I mean, 
highly recommend <laughs> y'all it was so good the representation like i said it's an own voices author and narrator uh the okay. audiobook narrator is also latinx and trans and so it's just like the representation is amazing and i just oh, i that. loved it so much oh that kind of brings me to a quick little note i want to say about road code still keeping within 20 percent uh what i love that elizabeth or lizzie does is that there are moments where characters kind of say something that does or do something that leans into like propelling modern social norms mm -hmm. and like but without it feeling like it's being spoon fed to you and forced down your throat because there are some stories or tv shows nowadays that really try to be like look we're we're with the peeps today we're with the people and the way things need to be and it just feels overdone and then it kind of does the opposite where it feels like you're forcing it upon someone and who who yes they should learn the better things but like if you try so much to shove it in someone's face, they, they'll retaliate and they'll pull sure. away. So she <laughs> writes and does this in a way where it just feels normal. Like one of the characters, you know, if one of his friends makes a homophobic joke, like 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 being gay as a joke, like, you know, our generation, we were young, like, haha, you're gay. Like, he'll be like, all right, you're buying lunch. He's like, damn it, and then like, <laughs> buy lunch. And so it's like, he, he put a negative reinforcement to make sure that they don't do yeah. something like that and so and it, i love things like that where the representation just feels like natural a part of the conversation already yeah, like it's natural. not and so um obviously the ones like the hate you give and things mm -hmm. like that where it is being uh let's just say a different race like being that race and your experiences mm -hmm. are a huge part of the story and the plot and why yeah. the story takes place those are incredibly important stories as yeah. well and, and incredibly powerful reads um yeah. but i also love every once in a while just getting a book i read it's over here a couple months ago now but take a hint danny brown and yeah, yeah. it's a second in the series um so the first one is get a life chloe brown but <laughs> those ones are like like danny brown in this one is a bisexual like plus size woman of color and that's just yep. it's how it is like it's not at any point is it's not like oh, she's this, so she has to be this way, or, like... It doesn't mean to be... really a part of the story at all. It's just, like, this is who I am as a character, and now right. we're going to go on with this story. And so I love representation like that, too, where it's just, like, this is a part of the conversation because it's who this person is, but it doesn't need to be brought up, you know? Yeah, it's it's subtle enough where it's, like, it's like a pin needle on the on the cork board mm -hmm. but it's pinned in just the right place where it's staying yeah. and so and i'm like oh that was effective that worked because it made me think about it and, and yeah. so i love that it's it's natural it's in the character's conversation like even like gender gender norms is like in the beginning of this book and it was said in just kind of an offhand sentence that i was like i was like oh and then the book carried on and i was like but that stuck with me i remember that now that's a that's a thought that i agree with and so i, I love that and i love when a book uh, especially with like you said the hate you give about you know races a race that we aren't and struggles that they go through like with uh, mm -hmm. how it went how it went down that book that and that goes for all sorts of minorities that was just yeah. the easiest example yeah. that i had my and, fingertips yeah and with how it went down the same thing is it's just those are written in such a way by authors who have had those experiences or authors who have a strong knowing of it because and it's written in a way where anyone else who is not a part of that minority can grip to it easily and not be overwhelmed with this is where you can be wrong please be right it is just this is how it is please recognize it yeah and and i love that when it's when it's please recognize it not don't don't be this it's recognize it and on your own take with that what you will sure and then the last book that i wanted to talk about is the one that i am starting tonight that is i'm so excited about and it is this one. It is In a Holidays by Christina <laughs> Lauren. Uh, yeah, super excited for people who can't see it, obviously, from the title. It's a, it Very takes Christmas. place during Christmas. Um, <laughs> but it's Holidays. 
H-O-L-I-D-A-Z-E. So it's a fun play on words there. Um, <laughs> Christina Lauren are actually an author duo. Okay. Uh, one named Christina, one named Lauren. Ha ha. Uh, uh, but they pleasure. write together. And it's just, their books are so fun. I literally have six of them on my shelf right now. Right. They're one of my favorite like authors currently writing. And so I'm just really excited for this one. Like I said, it takes place during the holidays and I am so very ready for Christmas season. <laughs> um, and it's, they describe it as kind of Groundhog's Day, but Christmas. Uh, oh, okay. Where the main character kind of ends up reliving the same day and the same experiences over mm. and over again. But from how they've described it in interviews... And I watched like a Facebook live of them talking about it, things like that. It's more of a, in order to break the cycle, she has to figure out how to make herself happy. So it's more of like a self-love thing okay. than it is like a stop being a- Solve the mystery bitch. or stop the- Right. Yeah. Um, and then it's just like a holiday story and it's huge on found family which i love mm. in books and movies um i just i love the idea of people getting to choose the family for their lives and so yeah. i'm just i'm really excited i'm starting this one tonight i already have a bookmark in it yeah <laughs> i'm yeah, just like that, i'm ready and i get to be a little excited because for december obviously with our two books we're going to be doing uh Christmassy stories or Christmas based stories. And our plan for when it comes to that is I think each of us gets our own pick for whatever theme we choose for our month. So I've already chosen what book yeah, I kind of think. We'll see. Um, I don't want us to be like this month it's fantasy and then have two. Fantasies. No, no, no. Right, right. So right. we'll kind of play with that, see how that works yeah. out. But. but definitely for Christmassy, we're doing two fun Christmas reads. And so I know I have mine picked. Do you have mm -hmm. yours picked? I'm pretty sure, but I have. A couple things in the back of my mind. I'm going to okay. kind of workshop cool. and double check, but your read is going to be first anyway. <laughs> All right. And then really from there, what have you been watching? My, my watches kind of turn into also more reads as well. So what, what have you been watching recently? Um, so I will just say what we did yesterday because it was really fun. You will very much appreciate it. <laughs> so we are recording this on November 1st. So yesterday obviously was Halloween and it was wild. <laughs> Nothing this year is how it should be or how it usually is. Uh, but basically I did a fun Disney bound costume instead of doing a full costume. And then um, we made wassail and we're just kind of drinking warm wassail all day and we did a spooky spoopy marathon like that <laughs> it's a dumb word but it's like the word right. the youths use to describe like non-scary <laughs> halloween stuff um spooky. and so we anyone who has listened to basically any of our uh, discussions so far. I'm not really a scary movie person, mm -hmm. but there are a couple that I have wanted to watch because the story sounded interesting or I really like the source material or, you know, whatever, um, mm -hmm. and have kind of been on a back burner list for me because I wanted to watch them, but I knew I wanted to watch them in the middle of the day. <laughs> right. I don't want to watch them at night. I'm just not <laughs> about that. Um, and so we did, we just spent all day and evening doing a, um, movie marathon. Like we watched the part one, 2017 it, but then we also watched a Scooby-Doo movie and like <laughs> we watched, um, Tucker and Dale versus evil. Uh, uh and then we watched, th uh, the original, the witches with Angelica Houston. So just like, oh yeah, yeah. Going back and forth. it was so nice. Yeah, I uh, I haven't done any Halloween. I actually got the obsession of wanting to watch the original Halloween and its sequel mm. because there are so many Halloween sequels that there's apparently like yeah. five timelines with how they all work in continuity. So the latest Halloween that came out in 2018 is supposed to be the definitive number two where there's been so many twos and there's been so many follow-ups where this one, I guess, was the one that was actually approved by the original creator. Like this, I consider the actual sequel to my classic um, and it jumps 40 years later. Uh, um, 
oh my god how am i forgetting the actress's name uh jamie lee curtis jamie lee curtis i was gonna say i know about these movies and i know the plots and everything because i like jamie lee curtis jamie lee curtis came back for it it's 40 years later and they're turning now that sequel into a trilogy so that follow-up is coming Mm -hmm. and then one more and they just look like my taste because uh but i've never seen the original and so we were looking where to find it it's only on prime for like a cheap rental um, but we may do that. My mom's been wanting to watch It Chapter 2 because she hasn't seen it yet. So mm-hmm. I have part one. We'll, we'll probably rent part two. So she's wanted to do a back-to-back marathon, but that's like five hours of the movie. So because yeah. this part two is almost three hours long. Um, but what we've been watching, the big thing, which leads to a read, is I finally got my folks into Game of Thrones. It is, I mentioned it. I knew my dad would love it, that it would maybe at least intrigue my mother. Well, now she's intrigued because she hates all the bad guys winning. And so she wants, she wants to come up. It's in karma. My dad's intrigued. Um, and it's made me want to read the books now. I have all the books. I bought the paperback box set, mm-hmm. but I'm afraid to invest because I'm afraid George R. R. Martin isn't going to finish the damn series. And so I, I want him to before I invest. Um, but it's made me want to read because I know there are differences that sound really cool in the books compared to the show. Like, mm-hmm character resurrections more supernatural stuff than even the show has and i'm just like, i want to read that but i don't want to get to the point i know the books stop at yeah <laughs> so. that's a that's a show that nick and i have both talked about like we should probably watch this right like i think we would really like it and but every time we said it there would be like three more seasons or we would right. be four seasons in already and we're like yeah. we're not gonna jump in at this point like at this point should we just wait until it's all out or you know whatever um just because it's such a commitment to commit to Mm -hmm. what is it eight or nine seasons of a show it's eight seasons Um, the last two are shorter so it's a total of 73 episodes yeah so it's just like a big time commitment um so we will watch it eventually because we know we would both enjoy it nick has read at least some of the books i don't remember if he's mm -hmm. read all of them right Uh, I'm not a huge fantasy person usually. So actually, mm-hmm. Nick has basically said, like, probably don't read the books. Just watch the show. Right. You won't enjoy them. So I might break my usual rule and just skip the books and just watch mm-hmm. the show. It, it is one of those ones where, well, because that was what happened is a friend made me watch it because I told him how I had never read Harry Potter. I'd only watched them. So he said, okay, you're going to watch Game of Thrones. I was like, well, aren't I supposed to read them first? And he's like, no, you broke this one. You can bro- break this one. Yeah, right. So, you didn't read Harry Potter. You're not going to yeah. read Game of Thrones. So he put me through. And at the time, only season six was out. So we watched all the way to season six. And then I couldn't watch season seven or eight. So then when eight was finished, I bought the box set because I had uh, as a birthday present and binged them all and i binged it from beginning to end and while some people say the ending fails the show i think it works it is just definitely a thing where it's like maybe they rushed it maybe they could have done fuller seasons or or a season longer Mm -hmm. but i think it fits and so uh i'm excited for we've done really well we've i think we've only been at it for two and a half weeks and we're on the last episode of season four so they're really sucked into it apparently Um, also, Dexter is now on my personal because, I don't know if you heard, they've announced a ninth season. I did, uh, yes. uh, And so it's going to be considered a limited follow-up. It's going to be considered not a ninth season, but a new finale because people weren't happy with how the show ended. So it got me in the mood to watch it because I haven't watched it for years. So I think after I read a little bit, I put an episode on at lunch. So I'm only at the end of season two right now out of eight seasons, and there's 12 episodes a season on that show. And it makes me want to read those books as well, because I've only read the first three books, and there are eight, just like the show. But for those, for people interested, those take a big departure. Uh, The first season and first book match up. The second season of the show completely departs from the stories of the book. Cracks me up when they do that. They're like, wow, this worked really well for season one. Better do the exact opposite for season two. Well, and the show does does a good job. Some people think the first half is better than the second half. I think... I disagree. I think even some seasons in the second half are good, but it's uh, it's just all a matter of taste. But the books, I guess, are a completely different beast when compared to the show. So that has been that. Um, as of current watches, I want to start Mandalorian season two, but like I said, I've I've hated waiting weekly now, so I'll wait till all episodes come out. It ends like by December or end of November will be all the episodes because uh, it's eight, I believe. So mm, um, yeah, something like that. Uh, and then the last one is uh, kind of leaning away from a book for people who delve into other sort of reading 
material. Um, there's a graphic novel that got me really interested to want to read. It mm -hmm. kind of, it goes back to Batman, how we talked about. Um, well, because remember I said there was the Batman novel that was the adaptation of that comic I did a monologue from? <laughs> so yes. they've done a follow-up to that long-loved comic, sort of. Um, where, because the whole thing about it is the, the comic I'm talking about is Batman the Killing Joke. For people who know it all or don't, it's well loved to be the exact origin of the joke comes from. So this follow-up was in 2015, they did a reveal where they think, oh, how does the Joker keep living for so many years in comics? There are three of them. I was like, what? And a lot of people scratch their heads at it. So the idea is that Batman has been up against three different guys. And so so this comic is him facing those three and learning which one is the main Joker. <laughs> anyway, we ended up back on Batman for the third episode. <laughs> just just because uh, the read, the, the, the book was looking at me, but it, it came up on my feeds constantly. And I was like, what is it about this comic? And then I looked and it was apparently like every year, finally a comic run has like a big deal storyline and this was it. And I was like, there are three Jokers? Why? And so I had to look into it and it was an interesting backstory. But kind of my reads and kind of my watches i'm into dark stuff right now every time someone dies on game of thrones my mom gets pissed and goes why are we watching this and i'm like because eventually there's some karma my mom does that too with basically anything she tries to bully people into giving her spoilers she's like you better tell me what happens and we're like we're oh, not going to <laughs> oh no my, my mom is always a spoiler person so it will never be i'll, I'll never not be able she'll look at me and be like is this person die i go Yes, no, shut up, dad's over there. I just <laughs> so, tell her I'm not going to tell her, and then she, like, tries to ground me, and I'm like, I'm an adult. <laughs> no, because my mom, if I don't tell her, she grabs her phone and immediately starts looking it up. Sure. And I'm just like, eh. <laughs> Okay, um, so I think, on yes. the Batman note, it is time to wrap up. Do yes. you have any final thoughts? Uh, no. Uh, well, well, I guess final is just my wrap-up thoughts is that I'm really excited for the book we're reading it right now. I'm really excited for us to eventually get uh, to interview her. And then we'll probably discuss beforehand what kind of questions we're going to ask her and how we're going to lay out this episode. Because I think what we want to do is we kind of want to treat it like our normal discussion ones where we'll discuss the book, but it will be tailored more to our favorite moments. How did she maybe come up with those moments? What yeah, so it'll basically be our regular episode will be condensed into the first probably half mm -hmm. uh and then the end of the episode will switch more into a little bit of an interview and yeah. uh bring in those book club questions that we usually bring in but kind of discussing those with her and uh her yeah. thoughts on it as well so very excited yeah. And so with that, and then wanting to finally read a book alongside, like I said, today I have to start the other book. So my minimum today is I have to at least read 30 pages of that book. I think it's like the first three chapters. So um, I'm excited to do that and to see if my mental capacity can handle two stories going on at the exact same time. So I think it can, especially, especially with one halfway through. I you think it's fine. You can watch five TV shows at the same time. You can read two books. Like, come the yeah, fuck on, Bridget. It's, it's, yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I do believe so. And so uh, I think my, my limit may be three because I know that when we do two books a month, I still want to have a personal read somewhere in there mm -hmm. and see if I can at least do that. So two books I definitely believe can happen. Uh, I'm telling you, you need to get into audiobooks. You can listen to one while you're working on other stuff, working around the house, uh, while you're in the car, heading places, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, it's I, reading I know without I can, the commitment of reading. <laughs> it's it's reading without your eyes, it's your ears. And so, yeah. um, I think I can. I just I don't know. I always like I say I love the feeling of just seeing my progress go through it. And so I feel like with the progress being a time bar code, like I, I just feel like there's less satisfaction in it. And I know that it gives I'm you still a percentage, probably, like fifty percent of the way, sixty percent of the way. Yeah, I did that for one odd. Uh, I was reading a, I wanted to write a monster story and I actually bought a book of, it was how to write monsters. And it meant like, not in the way of like, this is just how to create an original creature, but it was like, if you aren't a hundred percent sure on yourself of how to write suspense, this is how you make a creature scary. It's not about what it looks like or this or that. It's how does it move in a story? And when I was reading that, I had a little percentage at the bottom. I was just like, this is a short book because I'm at 34%. <laughs> so... 
basically just like reading it on the Kindle. Anyway, we've yeah. gotten back off track. So I'm yes. going to start wrapping <laughs> us up. You can email us anytime at the same page pod at gmail.com. As always, that'll be in the description down below. If you have any books you think we should read for the podcast, any questions, collaboration requests, or if you've read any of our uh, recent reads or upcoming reads and maybe have book club questions of your own or favorite parts, things you'd like us to include in our discussion, let us know. We'd love for you guys to be a part of the discussion with us. And then if you want to reach out to me specifically or see maybe what else I'm reading that I don't talk about on our check-in episodes, you can find me over on Instagram at tackling underscore TBR, or my blog is tacklingtbr.home.blog. And then as for the podcast, you can find and connect with us on Instagram at the same page podcast, on Twitter at the same page pod, and you can find us on both Facebook and YouTube just by searching for the same page podcast. And then the last thing I'm going to say, as always, uh, is if you are listening to our show and you like what you hear, please consider heading over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening to the episodes and subscribing, giving us a positive rating, and leaving your thoughts in a review. It's a really quick process. It really only takes a couple minutes, but it really helps small shows like us get introduced to more bookish folks. Woot! Yeah. And so this has been a fun check-in. Um, I said we're just really excited about this month because it's something different, something bigger, and something that we hope to maybe get to do more of in the future. And so this will be this will be a fun month. And then December comes the real brawl of multiple, much more episodes a month. <laughs> yes, we have not yet. Dana and I decided what day of the week those will be going up on. Um, so we it will definitely be in our. Uh, book discussion on the 30th but we will also before then announce it on instagram so again head on over it's the same page podcast if you want to be updated when we decide when those are going to go live perfect all right so thank you all for listening to our latest check-in we'll see you on the 30th for our full review of the bro code and our talk with elizabeth yeah all right so we'll see you all next time bye <laughs>